What's up, gang? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. Let's go. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Oh, the algorithm. This week, we have back on a multi, 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 multi time return guest, our favorite guest of all time. You guessed it, the salad man himself, Paul Saladino. Let's see what Paul has to say about broccoli. Broccoli is bull. You guys have heard me say it before, but I'm gonna keep sure. saying it because you need to hear it. Broccoli is part of the brassica family of plants. This family of plants contains compounds like isothiocyanate, <gasps> which prevent the absorption of iodine in your <gasps> thyroid, which leads to lower levels of thyroid hormones, low energy, weight gain, fatigue, malaise. Broccoli is also a common cause of gas, bloating, GI issues. You know this. You know that you are eating broccoli and you are farting afterwards. I know what's happening to you. I am giving you permission to stop eating broccoli. You don't need this in your life. Get the nutrients you need from meat and organs, the less toxic plant foods, which are fruits. Ooh. You don't need to feel guilty about not eating broccoli. It's not good for you, and it's bull****. So, get it out of your life. He just put his hands all over that broccoli and puts it back in the thing. Come on, man. So, we talk about mechanisms versus outcomes all the time. This is a textbook example. Isothiocyanates prevent the absorption of iodine. That's gonna lead to low thyroid, which is gonna lead to weight gain and low energy. So what if we actually look at the human studies where people eat more broccoli? Do they have lower levels of thyroid hormone? Do they gain weight? Are they less healthy? Look here, people who eat more broccoli have lower risk of cardiovascular disease, have lower risk of mortality. They are leaner they have basically better overall health outcomes in every single aspect that you could possibly imagine. But oh yeah, let's worry about isothiocyanates. What he is doing is cherry picking a mechanism and then trying to convince you that it's gonna cause you something negative. I can do the same thing with meat, Paul. Heterocyclic amines, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, heme iron, those things have all been shown in mechanisms to cause cancer, and possibly cardiovascular disease. But you don't see me demonizing meat. I could find no data showing that broccoli ingestion had any negative effect on thyroid hormone. In rodents, they actually showed it improved some thyroid function. I don't know how much to take out of that, but wh where is this data, Paul? Where is this data? Oh, wait, it doesn't exist. Or maybe it's in some random book that nobody's ever checked out in some place in Germany that nobody's ever heard of in a library that nobody ever goes to that Paul found. Throwback to one of the greatest what the fitnesses of all time. So what he is doing is the equivalent of looking at a mutual fund with 500 different stocks in it and saying, oh, Look at this one stock that's down 40%. You, you, don't want to, you don't want to invest in this mutual fund while neglecting to tell you that the overall mutual fund is up by 30% for the year. Broccoli is the mutual fund. Does it have in it something that if you fed it in a really high amount, if all your investment was in that single stock, if you isolated those compounds out of broccoli and fed them in a super high dose, it could have a negative impact? Yeah, I can also make that argument for literally any food, any food. Paul likes fruits. Cool, apples have cyanide in them. Why is Paul not ranting about cyanide? Because it doesn't fit his narrative. I am convinced that Paul Saladino was a child who did not like eating vegetables and thus just constructed an entire diet around why he doesn't have to eat vegetables because it's the healthiest diet in history. If you want to lie to yourself, go right ahead. But please don't lie to everyone else, I'm out.